Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Unmanned aerial vehicles, also known as drones, have changed the face of warfare. UAVs like the Predator B, also known as the Reaper, made its first unmanned combat strike in Afghanistan in 2007. Reapers and similar systems are now commonplace across the skies of the world. Did you know that the MQ-9 Reaper was developed directly from a pizza box sketch by General Atomics researchers who wanted to scale up the successful Predator drone? This larger airplane could carry a substantially larger payload. Modern Reaper operations include launch and recovery teams in forward locations. With mission control transferred to operators at stateside facilities after the aircraft reaches altitude. These stateside pilots fly flights all around the world using satellite connectivity. Recent satellite communication advancements now allow for full mission execution, including takeoff and landing from remote places thousands of miles away. Uh, I'm a Staff Sergeant in the United States Air Force and I'm a crew chief on the MQ-9. We've been here all week. Uh, we're here testing our uh, SLR capability. So basically we come down here with a minimum man crew, less of a footprint. And we are training our pilots to take off and land through satellite. And what that's gonna do for us in the future is that it allows us to go to more places with less uh, of a footprint. MQ-9 pilots complete touch-and-go training totally via satellite control from faraway sites. At locations like Creech Air Force Base, Pilots and sensor operators rehearse extremely difficult maneuvers with satellite launch and recovery technology. This development enables total aircraft control without the need for ground stations, marking a significant shift in drone operations. Crews can carry out full mission profiles, including hard landing practice from thousands of miles away considerably lowering the danger to personnel and equipment in hostile areas. Pilots now communicate with the MQ-9 via Q-band satellite communications, rather than traditional UHF line-of-sight radio signals. This enhanced technology allows for entire aircraft control over encrypted SATCOM channels removing the requirement for line-of-sight control during any flight phase. The control station has dedicated satellite tracking screens, automatic frequency management technologies, and improved bandwidth monitoring. Multiple redundant SATCOM lines enable a stable connection during critical phases such as takeoff and landing. I'm Technical Sergeant Gardner, United States Air Force. I am an RPA sensor operator here at the 6th Attack Squadron. Operationally, my job is to operate this side of the GCS. So this is where the sensor operator sits. Our pilot will sit over here. He's kind of hidden by all these computers back here. So what I'm going to be primarily doing is operating my cameras, backing up the pilot, running checklists, making sure we're operating the aircraft safely and appropriately and doing our best to get the mission done for the uh, supported unit or whoever we happen to be working for that day. MQ-9 maintainers manage sophisticated non-routine maintenance tasks like satellite antenna failures, sensor package replacements, and encrypted communication system debugging. When critical systems fail, Skilled teams use diagnostic tools to isolate the defects in the drone's sophisticated electronics. Emergency repairs frequently include replacing composite materials, upgrading flight control software, and fixing problems with synthetic aperture radar systems. 
Maintenance staff must also manage unscheduled engine replacements and repair battle damage while working in transportable maintenance facilities, which can be quickly deployed across the world. Once the drone is ready, pilots use encrypted satellite communications to execute pre-flight inspections from remote ground control stations. The MQ-9's engines start on satellite command, replacing traditional UHF line of sight control. As power builds, the brakes are released and the aircraft accelerates down the runway. The seamless control changeover via SATCOM enables smooth rotation and a positive rate of climb, similar to traditional local control methods, but now done from thousands of miles away. MQ-9 Reapers carry out precision strike operations against high-value targets using weapons like AGM-114 Hellfire missiles and GBU-12 Paveway laser-guided bombs. The aircraft can carry up to four Hellfire missiles and two 500-pound GBU-12s at once. Armed Overwatch missions combine modern sensor systems with an instant attack capability. Crews employ synthetic aperture radar and electro-optical devices to track targets before firing precision weapons. Recent modifications include the capability of AIM-9X missiles for air-to-air -air engagement and improved GPS-guided munitions for all weather operations. We keep the mission control element stateside. Every other mission that is done requires somebody to be physically present in the actual battle space in order to affect change on the battlefield. Here, we can project power in a way that is unique to the platform. Various unique RPAs are being developed. One such program is the Strix Project, which was created jointly by BAE Systems and Innovero. This program marks Australia's foray into autonomous combat drones. This one-of-a-kind aircraft goes from vertical to forward flight without using any moving parts, breaking established aircraft design concepts. Built wholly in Australia across four states, Strix went from concept to flight-ready prototype in less than a year. This self-sufficient platform aspires to deliver advanced military capabilities while demonstrating Australian engineering expertise. So the Strix is a very complex platform that embodied many features that you don't see on regular aircraft. And even to come up with this arrangement involved a lot of out-of-the-box thinking. There's essentially no moving parts. We just have an aircraft that basically is equally comfortable hovering in a vertical aspect as it is flying forward. On December 13, 2023, Strix flew its first flight in Australia, exhibiting successful vertical takeoff, hover, and landing capabilities. The groundbreaking tilt body design enabled autonomous flying without standard moving surfaces or tilt rotors. This milestone demonstrated how an unorthodox aircraft configuration works, confirming two years of quick development. The test flight also demonstrated the drone's capacity to switch between vertical and horizontal positions, representing a key milestone in Australian aerospace innovation. Another innovative design comes from Kawasaki in Japan. Kawasaki's K-Racer takes a novel approach to high-speed VTOL cargo delivery. The compound helicopter's design overcomes traditional tail rotor restrictions by employing wing-mounted propellers for both stability and forward propulsion. The K-Racer X1 is based on Kawasaki's Group Vision 2030 and builds on previous test vehicle triumphs. This larger demonstration aircraft focuses on autonomous cargo operations with improved payload capacity and flight endurance. The development emphasizes reliable flight qualities, which are critical for logistics missions. Recent flight tests have validated the platform's capacity to convert between vertical and forward flight, 
while preserving the precise control required for cargo operations. K-Racer X-1's revolutionary cargo system combines autonomous ground robotics and aerial delivery. After landing, the aircraft grabs small, wheeled delivery robots with a specific gripping mechanism. These robots, carrying a variety of payloads, are then transported to various sites before being released by the K-Racer to conduct final mile delivery autonomously. This hybrid air-ground system anticipates future autonomous logistics networks, in which aerial platforms act as transportation hubs for various ground delivery robots. But there is already a newer version. Kawasaki's K-Racer X2 makes considerable progress in autonomous freight capabilities, successfully lifting 200 kilogram weights during tests at the Fukushima robot test field. This latest prototype has a seven meter main rotor and can fly for an hour with a range of 100 kilometers. The platform retains full payload capability at sea level while also hauling 100 kilogram cargo at high altitudes of up to 3,100 meters, making it Japan's most capable unmanned freight aircraft. The X2 project focuses on Japan's hilly regions where traditional logistics confront growing issues due to labor constraints. This program aims to ensure crucial supply lines to distant alpine lodges and infrastructure installations. Kawasaki's experiments in Aino City, Nagano Prefecture, show the platform's ability to service remote communities where traditional transportation methods are unsustainable, notably for high altitude supplies to mountain facilities. Yet another system called Zipline has transformed automated delivery systems with its novel approach to drone logistics. The company's major goal is to create what they call approximate teleportation, which allows anyone to receive delivery within minutes of purchasing. Operations are centered on three key systems, zips, droids, and docks, all of which are made at their South San Francisco factory. By 2025, Manufacturing expects to attain one zip every hour, exhibiting aggressive scaling plans that could alter global delivery systems. The manufacturing method emphasizes integrated design and production teams collaborating with real-time quality control technologies. Performance indicators demonstrate huge advantages over traditional delivery systems, with operations 10 times faster with zero emissions. Significantly lower costs combined with minutes-long delivery times result in a globally accessible system. The platform excels in delivering medical supplies and important items to rural or underdeveloped places, highlighting its critical role in modern logistics. Dependability is the result of stringent manufacturing methods, such as continuous quality monitoring and immediate post-production testing which are supported by extensive documentation and integrated feedback systems. Each component is rigorously tested before assembly to ensure optimal dependability in field operations. The production plant maintains direct communication with the design and testing teams, resulting in a continuous improvement cycle. Testing infrastructure includes complex equipment such as rotating dock fixtures and specialized handling arms. Inline quality control stations collaborate with component verification systems to give instant performance confirmation. This rigorous testing method assures that each item fulfills the exact specifications before deployment. Manufacturing excellence is based on purpose-built facilities where teams work closely together using advanced tracking systems and tight quality controls in scalable manufacturing processes. This methodical approach supports Zipline's stated mission of revolutionizing logistics through automated delivery. Autonomous aerial systems have come a long way since the development of the MQ-9 Reaper. Not only can we wage war from a remote controlled station, but we can also use the technology for peaceful purposes. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it.
Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.